Good morning. Welcome. Yes, we are live from my house. As a parish, the wardens and I and have decided that it is prudent to not meet for services today. I'm not sure what just happened. Okay, we're still live. Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, wardens and I have decided that we want to be extra safe and not meet. COVID is rising and we care about you. So we are going to go to virtual only again until further notice. So here I am at home in front of the fire with a hot chocolate and feeling better. For those of you who know, I did go through a COVID scare this week. My results have come back that I don't have it, but that's how easily it can happen. Even with using proper protection, some people don't, so we're at risk. Please wear your mask, protect others, care about others as we do as Christians, and wash your hands. Every time you think of it, wash your hands. It's the best way to keep COVID down. So thank you for staying home and watching this virtually. We are going to do morning prayer. So we will be using the Book of Alternative Services. And with Facebook Live, I don't have the ability to split screen and give you the service online. Hopefully you have a book. If not, just be at peace with God. Listen, pray as you can, and let us come into the presence of God with penitential hearts and with love. We begin on page 45. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent, penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is in his holy temple. O oh, come, let us worship. The Vanity. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with praise, with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We will now continue with our reading. And please feel free to say hello to everyone else who is here today. A reading from Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. 
So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army is Sisera, who lived in Herosheth Hangolim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between uh, Ramon and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoah from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel commands you, go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his char chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, if you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went to, with Barak to Kadesh. Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. And 10,000 warriors went up behind him. And Deborah went up with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, song. There it is. Too many books. <laughs> Our song today is Psalm 123, and it is found on page 883 if you have your BAS. We will respond by full verse. To you I lift my, up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the derision of the proud. And together we pray. King of love, rule in the hearts of all people on earth through your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may become one family and one kingdom, serving you by serving each other. <clears throat> we ask this in his name. A reading from the letter to, Thess to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us, for God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. 
the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you have handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man reaping what you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to, to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because I was sick this week, Sherry has graciously offered to pass on a message for me. Good morning. You might approach the story about the wealthy man who entrusts his property to three servants or slaves by talking to an investment manager or someone who works in what is called the wealth management industry. Ask him or her what you have to do and the risks you must be willing to take to double your money. He or she will, in all probability, tell you about the rule of 72, which most of us have never heard of. If your investment has a guaranteed interest rate of 5%, you divide the interest rate into 72 and the answer will be the number of years it will take to double your money. 5% into 72 parts equals 14 and a half years. If you inquire about how risky this is, you will learn that if you want to double your money quickly, the risk escalates dramatically. In the world of venture capital, only about one of four or five some even say one out of 10 makes it. The other times you lose everything. Jesus told the story in the middle of his own personal high risk venture. It was during the last few days of his life. Earlier, he had made a decision to leave the safety of rural Galilee and go to Jerusalem, the capital city, where the religious authorities would regard him as a threat to the status quo 
and their own power and prerogatives, and the Romans would surely regard him as a disturber of the peace. The parable is about a wealthy man who goes away on a long journey. Before he departs, he distributes his property to three slaves. It is a great deal of money. The first slave takes the money to the market, to a wealth management firm, and invests in high-risk ventures. The second slave does the same thing, puts the money to work at high risk. Both do very well. Both reap the rewards of the rule of 72. When their master returns, he is very pleased. Well done, he says. Then he promises that they will receive more responsibility in the future. The third slave takes a very different approach with his money, his one talent. He digs a hole in the ground and puts all the money in the hole for safekeeping. In a time of stock market decline, this man looks very wise. This is not a bad man. This is a prudent, careful, cautious investor. He is not about to take chances with the money. It is all there, every penny of it, when his master returns. He is proud of himself. Here it is, all of it, safe and sound. For his efforts, he is treated as harshly as anyone in the Bible. I cannot help wondering how it would have turned out if the first two slaves had put the money in a high-risk venture and lost it all. Jesus did not tell it that way, but I cannot but imagine that the master would not have been harsh toward them and might even have applauded them for their efforts. The point here is not really about doubling your money and accumulating wealth. It is about living. It is about investing. It is about taking risks. It is about Jesus himself and what he has done and what is about to happen to him. Mostly, it is about what he hopes and expects of all of them after he is gone. It is about being a follower of Jesus and what it means to be faithful to him. And so finally, it is about you and me. The greatest risk of all, turns out, is not to risk anything not to care deeply and profoundly enough about anything to invest deeply, to give your heart away and in the process risk everything. The greatest risk of all, it turns out, is to play it safe, to live cautiously and prudently. Orthodox conventional theology identifies sin as pride and egotism. However, there is an entire other lens through which to view the human condition. It is called sloth, one of the ancient church's seven deadly sins. Sloth means not caring, not loving, not rejoicing, not living up to the full potential of our humanity, playing it safe, investing nothing, being cautious and prudent digging a hole and burying the money in the ground. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said that the sin of respectable people is running from responsibility. Bonhoeffer, who was a pacifist, took his own responsibility so seriously he joined the resistance and helped plan an assassination attempt on Hitler's life. His sense of responsibility cost him his life. How important is this personally in terms of how we live our lives? Jesus' warning is that the outcome of playing it safe, not caring, not loving passionately, not investing yourself, not risking anything, is something akin to death, like being banished to the outer darkness. Now for most of us, religion, our personal faith, has not seemed like a high-risk venture. In fact, it has seemed to be something like the opposite. Faith has seemed to be a personal comfort zone. Faith, many of us think, is about personal security, here and in the thereafter. 
Faith, we think, is no more risky than believing ideas in our heads about God and Jesus, a list of beliefs to which we more or less subscribe intellectually. Faith, we think, because that is what we have been taught, is getting our personal theology right and then living a good life by avoiding bad things. Religion, we think, is a pretty timid, non-risky venture. Here, Jesus invites us to be his disciples, to live our lives as fully as possible by investing, by risking, by expanding the horizons of our responsibilities. To be his person, he says, is not so much believing ideas about him as it is following him. It is to experience renewed responsibility for the use and investment of these precious lives of ours. It is to be bold and brave, to reach high and to care deeply. So the parable is the invitation to the adventure of faith, the high risk adventure of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. These are the words of John M. Buchanan, who wrote them in a sermon years ago. Amen. Thank you, Sherry. <clears throat> Wise words. It's also very warm here. Continuing with our morning prayer. <clears throat> Together, as you know it, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater, greater than these. We continue with the prayers of the people. The response to, O God, for the sake of Christ, is have mercy on us. The day of the Lord is soon upon us, a day not of wrath, but of salvation. As children of light and of the day, let us await the coming of the Lord in prayer on behalf of the human family around the world. Let us pray for those who are not ready for the coming of the Lord, for the unbelieving, the skeptical, the scorners, that they may be brought to faith and rejoice to confess the name of the Lord. O God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for those who use their lips and lives to proclaim the good news of Christ's return, that they may persist in their zeal, empowered and emboldened through the gifts of your spirit. O God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for those who with joy and longing await the returning of the Messiah, that they may not grow weary in well-doing, but witness to the immediate and everlasting promise of our Holy Redeemer. O God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for those whose lives are marked by hunger and need, grief and loneliness, anger and strife, discord and uncertainty, especially in these times of the pandemic and quarantine, that each may be assured of the grace and mercy of God. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for those who suffer affliction of any kind, that God, their constant companion and champion, may grant them healing and hope and life. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for those who are prevented from praying with us, the persecuted and their persecutors, that each may be convinced of the good news of Jesus Christ and respond with faith and commitment. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for ourselves, that the Spirit will ready us for the return of our Savior and King, 
that we may enjoy forever the exhilarating life awaiting the faithful in heaven. O God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Because you are God, you hear our prayers. Because you are merciful, you promise to answer. We commend to you, merciful God, ourselves, and those for whom we pray, through the crucified and risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us, and bring us to eternal light and joy through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those that you love and those you should love now and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us today at this fireside chat and worship of God. There is still room if you want to sign up for the online Bible study, so check out our website. See you next week.